Hello everyone, welcome back to IKEA Dodontics, the channel where we all learn together. We've got another pretty interesting case today. I mean, not nothing special, but still every endo is pretty interesting. So let me just back up. Now we got two teeth here, upper eye four, upper eye five. The upper eye four, we've already done this on a different appointment. So we're not gonna be dealing with this, although it was very interesting because he had a pretty nice curvature here at the end. Always nice to see on the post-op x-ray but a lot of decay on both of the teeth. So yeah, today we're gonna to be discussing about this upper eye five. Now, pretty straightforward case, a little bit of curvature, a uh, few curvatures here at the apical part, a little bit of periapical radiolucency, nothing too much, a big decay, temporary filling, a distal amalgam filling. So yeah, now when I first access that tooth, of course, I removed all the DK, did my pre-endo build-up here, always spend time because a pre-endo build-up will save you a lot of time. I mean, you can always work without this wall, but you're always going to be afraid of a polaroid leaking into patient's mouth and then you get this horrible reaction by the patient. So you don't want that. You just want to make sure that you rebuild this, although you can put some liquid rubber down there, but then sometimes it gets stuck and it's so hard to get out. So save yourself some time do the pre-endo build-up beforehand and then don't worry about the hypolarite leaking into the patient's mouth so this is what i do i mean what you do is your choice of course so yeah we had a, um, a hemorrhagic pulp here which what i did before i started recording is i took my essex file and then i just do a few brushing motions um just to try to get that corona part removed so we can reduce the hemorrhage so I can actually see what I do. Uh, after that I'm gonna measure my working length. We got initially I can see two canals, buccal and palatal. Although I did get a hint of a third canal so I'm, this is what I'm gonna be doing here. I'm just gonna let it play um, live so you get to see how long I spent um, searching for the uh, canal in a sec. So yeah, don't worry too much about extra canals when I start my root canal treatment because you see, you can always come back, okay? And I find it easier sometimes to just prepare the canals that I know they're there, for example, the buccal and the palatal in this case, and then just return later on and see what I have. Because sometimes it becomes pretty clear once you've prepared the canals whether there's something extra there, some extra anatomy, or it's just these canals that you thought uh, they were there initially. So I'll just let it play here. I'm just searching just in between. This is where I think the canal, the extra canal is. Uh, so I'm just going onto the buccal and then I'm just slightly moving into the middle trying to see whether I, I get anything there. And then I go to the palatal and then I just trying to move a little bit more uh, to the middle of the canals and then see whether there's anything there. So, so far nothing, okay. So I initially thought that my canals were quite uh, large so i'm just gonna take my s2 just as a scouting uh, file i want to see how far down i can get to my working length i cannot get uh too far down so i'm just gonna do like a crown down um technique i'm just gonna do s2 and then get my s1 just to help me get a little bit more length crown down technique is very nice to use but you need to be careful and you need to just be aware when you use it i mean it's nice on, on straight canals because it allows you to, um, so every file that you use, for example, you go F2, F1, S2, S1, each bigger file that you use, it helps you carry the smaller one a little bit further down towards the working length, which is nice. But in curved canals, you need to be more careful because you can just kind of ledge and then make your life uh, miserable after that. So in, in straight canals, I would use it like a crown down technique but in curved canals and complex cases, I will just follow the natural synchronous of the files. I wouldn't uh, play with my files. So I'm just rechecking my working length just because I still have bleeding, even though I've prepared uh, um, the canals to the working length with my uh, S1. And sometimes that means that you've um, that you're preparing over the uh, of the apex and you're just traumatizing the periodontal space and then you got bleeding from that. So I want to make sure that I'm working uh, within my working length. 
because after that we'll get the finishing files in and I want them to be on point okay because you want to be on point because you don't want to be risking uh, over enlarging the apical constriction and then carrying the risk of hypochlorite accident or calcium hydrochloride accident or sealer extrusion etc etc so you just want to be safe okay so I'm doing my F1 now now the reason that the camera is not on my files now is because um, when I when I get my working length, I just measure it from either the buccal or the palatal cusp and I will just glance over the microscope and just watch it real time like with my own eyes just to see whether I'm getting it on, uh, on the cusps. Okay, just a lot of hypochlorite. Just remember this is what the root canal treatment is all about. Chemical preparation of the canals is very, very important, not to say the most important part of the root canal. So what I'm doing here is I'm just removing uh, a little bit of that excess hypochlorite because I, I want to see the canals just to double check whether there is no third canal. Like I said before, I'm just coming back to it now. And as you can see, having prepared these two canals, it's pretty clear that we just have two of them. Okay. So don't spend too much time searching for extra canals. Just prepare what you can see and then come back to it and you most likely know. And also it's a bit of a psychological issue as well. Like having prepared these two canals, I feel like I have a lot of time to search for more. So just give yourself that boost of confidence that you've prepared the, the canals, uh, they've prepared something and that you're doing great and then Give yourself some time to search for more canals okay so what i'm doing here is i'm just showing you that i went with my finisher the f2 and what you want to see just to make sure that you uh um what you want to see is uh debris on the apical part of the on the apical flutes of your uh, instrument because that tells you that you've prepared the apical part of the root canal and that tells you that it's okay to finish uh at this file okay so you've um, sufficiently prepared the apical part of the root canal as well so you can finish with this one okay so this is what I'm doing here uh, I did the buccal one you seen the flutes I mean some okay and I'm doing the same one at the palatal one now and then I'm gonna show you the flutes again we got debris there so I'm happy I'm just gonna finish my preparation to the F2 so a lot of hypochlorite again Remember, this is very, very important. Recapitulate, make sure you got good, uh, make sure you got patency, you got a good glide path, and you got uninterrupted. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm gonna do my confit now. So I'm gonna put my GPs into the canals. Okay, the, at this point, this is, um, good stage to see whether the canals are coming together because once you've prepared the two canals let's say 20 millimeters each okay and then you put one GP in goes to 20 millimeters you put the other one in goes to 18 that means that the apical two millimeters the two canals just join together okay so this is the the time where you adjust your GPs and then you'll take your uh, confit radiograph and you will confirm that so as you can see here, the upper A4, just, yeah. We've done this routine on a different appointment, it looks really nice. We got this curvature here, just thought I'd mention it. But the confit on this upper A5, again, like I said, looks pretty straightforward, straight canals. Maybe a little bit of an adjustment of uh, one of the GPs, uh, just for a millimeter or so. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with what I see. So I'm gonna carry on. We're gonna do some uh, ultrasonic activation now. Just be very, very careful with the ultrasonics because remember, they can prepare your root canal. So, and also they can break. So you don't wanna be at this stage of your root canal and then having to deal with a broken ultrasonic tip. Okay, so just be very, very careful. I do enjoy sonic activation as well on curved canals where I cannot get my ultrasonics all the way uh, to a few millimeters from the working length. I will use sonic activation. Um, now I'm just drying the canals like that and then I'll take a paper point and carry my sealer all the way to 
to my working length and then just a little bit of sealer on the tip of my GP and carry that all the way to the length as well. I'm using AH Plus sealer which is a resin based sealer and I'm going to be doing a continuous wave compaction here. I have recently started using bioceramic sealers which um, I find them pretty interesting. There is some uh, pretty interesting literature out there. Um, yeah, I don't think they can be used in all of the, uh, all of the cases, but you can you can use them in most of the cases. There's always going to be a case that you need to just uh, do that continuous wave compaction. But this is my opinion, of course. Okay, so I'm just removing that uh, middle and chrono uh, GP, just leaving about five millimeters from the working length, from the apex, from the apical construction. Of course. I'm just, just make sure you compact, because remember this is where all the x-ray magic happens. This is where you feel those lateral canals, this, all these extra anatomy and you get to see it on the post of x-ray and then you're really happy with it, okay? Just remember to compact, just make sure you compact pretty, pretty well. You wanna make sure that you, yeah, that you do a good job with this. Just take your time, every step of the treatment, just take your time because if you're trying to rush one step, you're just gonna you're just gonna backfire, hundred percent, and it happens all the time. Okay, just do your protocol, follow it, and you'll get to the end of your root canal with no problem. So I'm using alcohol here just to remove that uh, resin base AH plus. And uh, with bioceramic sealers, of course, you can just wash that off, which is amazing. But in this case, alcohol, and it gets everything really, really clean, as you can see. And this is my post-op x-ray. Everything looks great. Everything has been sealed up until uh, the radiographic apex. We've done a, like, a pre-endo build up here. We're gonna do a composite core and then send the patient back to the dentist to get the, uh, the crowns done. So really happy with what I see. We got a... Different, um, different angle as well, cone shift, two separate canals, everything looks really good. The x-ray is a little bit uh, not good, but yeah, the quality is a bit, yeah, a bit off, but you can still see a uh, really good root canal treatment. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this case. If you liked this video, we would really appreciate if you liked, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.